We're currently saving up to buy a house, ideally a rental property in the short term and then a primary residence one day more into the future. Now in Canada, there's a lot of different ways to save up to buy a house. You could use a high interest savings account. You could use a TFSA or a tax-free savings account. You could use an RRSP, which is the Registered Retirement Savings Plan, and then take advantage of their first-time home buyer's plan. Or you could use an FHSA or the First Home Savings Account. I feel like there's a lot of information out there about each of these different options. At least we've done videos about all of these different accounts in the past, but there's not as many resources breaking down the pros and cons of each option, and specifically which one you should be using based on your personal situation and goals. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna be breaking down all these different options specifically for the purpose of saving money to buy a house, so not for retirement or long-term investing, including the basics that you need to know, the pros and cons, how it works, everything. So one of the first things that you need to consider when you're planning on buying a house is your timeline. And listen, there's a whole bunch of other things, a lot more specific things that you need to figure out at some point, but when you're in that initial phase where you're just starting out and you're looking at that, you're looking at things more high level and you're thinking to yourself, hey, we need to start saving some money in order to buy a house one day, the main thing that you need to consider and figure out is your timeline. Now let's break this down into four chunks. So let's do zero to two years, three to five years, five to 10 years, and then 10 plus years. Now, if you're in the zero to two year category, meaning that you're planning on buying a house within the short term, or you haven't quite figured out what your timeline is or how you're gonna save up to buy a house, then this option, so this first option might be the one for you, keyword being might. The first option is also the most simple option, which is saving your money in actual savings or hard savings within a high interest savings account. A high interest savings account is a savings account that earns above average interest rates on deposits, and basically your account balance would grow faster than it would in a traditional savings account. So by the way, when we think about saving money, we're typically thinking about saving our money within a high interest savings account. High interest savings accounts rates fluctuate depending on what's going on with the economy and with inflation. And by the way, just as like an FYI, so do all savings accounts rates. So what that means is that whenever you're going through this process again, you're probably gonna have to look up what the current rates are at that time. So as of right now in Canada, a solid high interest rate would be somewhere around 4%. And basically what that means is that for you, for you to keep your money within a specific type of savings account, you would earn 4% interest. For example, if you had $25,000 in your high interest savings account for a year, you'd have $1,000. So bringing your total up to $26,000. Whereas if you had $25,000 in just like a traditional savings account, then you'd probably still have at the end of that year, somewhere around $25,000, give or take. Okay, so now let's look at the pros for saving your money to buy a house within a high interest savings account. So first and foremost, you're guaranteed to not lose your money because you're not actually investing into anything. So you can't lose the money that you contribute yourself up to a specific limit, which I'll touch on in a second. This is specifically useful when you're saving up to buy a house because the money that you're saving is meant to be used for a specific purpose within a fairly short period of time. So you really don't wanna risk losing the money that you've already saved up yourself. Now the money is also accessible whenever you wanna use it. So basically what happens is that when your money's in a high interest savings account, it isn't tied up into anything. So for example, if the home buying process is moving really quickly and you need to access the money and then send it elsewhere, you can easily and very quickly do that within a high interest savings account. Ideally, you've picked an account that has no fees, no minimum account balances, or additional requirements, so really it's a low cost account to use. You can also pick an account that's protected by CDIC or the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation. Now we're gonna talk more about this in a few minutes here, but at a high level, CDIC insures eligible deposits in a savings account up to $100,000 per depositor per financial institution. So going back to that first pro that I mentioned, up to $100,000 of savings within one account is guaranteed to be protected if the bank that you were using were to fail and you can spread your money across multiple accounts if you have more than that saved up. Now with all that being said, there's also a few cons when it comes to saving your money to buy a house within a high interest savings account. Like I said before, interest rates do fluctuate. So even if you start out at a 4% interest rate, it could go down. So basically you have to keep an eye out on that. Also the ability that you have to grow your money is limited. Again, although interest rates can be higher with other savings accounts, it's still lower than the potential that you'd see if you were investing your money. The next options we're gonna talk about are all investment accounts, not savings accounts. Now, if you're in the three to five year, five to 10 year or 10 plus years category of saving money to buy a house, then you might wanna consider investing your money so that it has a chance to grow more than it would within a savings account. Now, the specific timeline category that you're in, that'll dictate what investments you wanna buy within the account, but let's cover the accounts first. So the next option is investing your money within a TFSA or a tax-free savings account, which is one of the tax advantage registered investment accounts available in Canada. 
Like the name says, the TFSA is tax-free. So your investments within this account are protected from having to pay any taxes on them should those investments grow and end up making you money. It's a pretty straightforward investment account from that perspective. You open up the account, you put money in the account, you buy investments with that money, and then hopefully your money grows so that when you go to sell your investments in the future and take money out of the account, you don't have to pay any taxes on that money as you would with regular income. This account's also available for most Canadians to use. You just have to be a resident of Canada and you have to be over 18 years old, as you probably already are if you're saving up to buy a house and you have to have a valid SIN. Now, typically the TFSA is an account that people would use to invest for retirement because investing your money for a longer period of time allows you to take advantage of compound interest. Basically, your money will grow more if it's gaining interest, and then the money with interest gained earns more interest, and so on. So you get to capitalize on the amazing tax-free perk of the TFSA by investing as early as possible and for as long as possible. But there are times that it might make sense to take money out of your TFSA in the shorter term. Now, you shouldn't be doing this for other expenses or ideally even for emergencies because hopefully you have an emergency fund, but for buying a house, it might make sense to do so sometimes. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that taking money out of your TFSA does impact your contribution room. Now, we haven't talked too much about contribution room in this video, but keep in mind that there is a specific limit, so a maximum amount of money that you can contribute to your TFSA. Let's explain this with an example. So if you contribute $50,000 to your TFSA and then it grows to $60,000, and then you decide to take that money out of your account in the middle of the year, you wouldn't be able to recontribute that amount into your TFSA until the next calendar year. On the other hand, if you contribute $50,000 to your TFSA, but then it decreases in value and goes to only $40,000, which would not be ideal, but you still chose to withdraw that $40,000 mid-year, then the next calendar year, you could still only recontribute $40,000 into the account. You've permanently lost $10,000 in contribution room. So the significance of this is that if you're using your TFSA to invest so that you can buy a house, it means that you likely don't have decades to ride the ups and downs of the market, so you could find yourself in a situation where you're ready to buy a house, and not only has the value of your account gone down, which would not be ideal in the first place, but if you still pull that money out to use, you could be permanently losing room within your TFSA. This is just something that you should be keeping in mind at a high level. Okay, so let's wrap this option up with the pros of using a TFSA to invest so that you can buy a house. You can withdraw your money tax-free, there's also no limit to how much money you can take out of the account. So if you're able to save or grow your money to $100,000, for example, you could take all of that money out and put it towards buying a house. And also if for any reason you don't end up buying a house with this money, even if that's what you intended to do with it, you can just keep and saving or investing this money for retirement instead. And now for the cons, the first one is that the money that you invest isn't guaranteed like it is if you were using a savings account. Also, if your money does decrease in value, you could potentially lose contribution room. And you're also limiting the full potential benefit that you could get from the TFSA by pulling your money out in the short term instead of giving it time to grow and compound. The next option is investing your money within an RRSP or a registered retirement savings plan, which is another tax advantage registered investment account available in Canada. The RRSP is meant to be used for you to invest for retirement. And I mean, it's literally in the name but they have a specific program called the First Time Home Buyers Plan that was created to help Canadians buy their first home by allowing them to take a specific amount of money out of their RRSP to be used for that purpose. First, let's do a quick overview of the RRSP. Now, the main tax advantage that this account has is that it's tax deferred. Let's use an example again to explain this. So if you have taxable income, AKA your salary of $80,000 a year, and in one year you contribute $15,000 to your RRSP, this reduces your taxable income. So instead of you having to pay taxes on $80,000, you would instead have to pay taxes on $65,000. So it essentially reduces the amount of taxes you pay in the short term. But it's not that you never have to pay those taxes. So in the future, aka once you hit retirement and you start taking money out of your RRSP, that's when you'll pay taxes on that money. So example time, if your taxable income is $50,000 a year in retirement and you also took out $15,000 out of your RRSP, P, then your new taxable income is $65,000. So the benefit here is that if your taxable income was higher when you initially contributed the money in the first place, um, then you would pay less taxes overall and you benefited in the short term. This account is also available for most Canadians to use. You have to be a resident of Canada for tax purposes 
and file income taxes, you have to be 71 years of age or younger, and you have to have an income. Mainly because the RRSP contribution room is based on how much you make, but we'll cover that more in a little bit. Now, even though the RRSP is for retirement, there is still the first time home buyers plan that I mentioned earlier that's meant for buying a home. So here's how it works. You have to be a first time home buyer and you have to plan on actually living in the home within one year of buying or building it. And then you're able to withdraw up to $35,000 from your RRSP tax free to be used for the purchase of your home. Actually, literally the week that we're filming this, there's been an update to the program and you can now withdraw up to $60,000 from your RRSP tax-free. So scratch that $35,000. The only catch is that you have to recontribute the money that you withdrew within 15 years. So let's say you withdrew $24,000 for the purpose of buying a house in 2024. That would mean that you would have until 2039 to recontribute that money back into your RRSP. And also with the new update to the program, they're also letting you start your repayment to your RRSP within five years instead of two years for a limited amount of time. The good news is, is that this is a benefit to you, right? Like it's already a good idea to be recontributing money back into your RRSP, but it's just something for you to keep in mind because if you don't recontribute money back into your RRSP, you do have to pay penalty fees. So now let's take a look at the pros of using the RRSP's first time home buyers plan so that you can invest in order to buy a house. Well, you can reduce your taxable income while saving for a house. Uh, you can withdraw the money tax free. And if for whatever reason you don't actually end up using the money to buy a house, even though that's what you initially intended to do, you can actually still use the account to invest for retirement instead. Now let's look at the cons. So first up, your money isn't guaranteed as it was when it was in a savings account. There's also a limit to how much money you can take out of the account. Like you can only take out a max of $60,000, even though with the average price of a house in Canada, you'll likely need more money than that when we factor in the down payment, the closing costs, and basically all the other associated costs. Now on top of that, there's minimum yearly repayment requirements with the first one being due two to five years from the first withdrawal. So five years being more so with the new program that they've that they've listed, uh, with two years being what it's been in the past and probably what it'll be in the future, but just make sure you keep an eye out on, on this one specifically. The last option is investing your money within an FHSA or first home savings account, which is the newest tax advantage registered investment account available in Canada. Now this account is obviously meant for saving up to buy a house. It's literally in the title first home savings account, and it was created to give Canadians more tax advantage options to save up for such a big expensive purchase. The FHSA pretty much combines the tax benefits of both the TFSA and the RRSP. So when you contribute money into your FHSA, you reduce your taxable income by the amount of money that you contribute to the account that year, and you also can withdraw your money tax-free. So it really is the best of both benefits. Now, you're eligible to open an FHSA if you're a resident of Canada, you're at least 18 years old, and if you're a first-time home buyer, which they define as not having owned a home that you've lived in for the past four calendar years. The FHSA is probably, and again, everything's situational, but probably the first investment account that you'd want to be using in order to save up to buy a house house as long as you're eligible to open one over the TFSA and RRSP. Now the reason for this is those tax benefits. Taking advantage of being able to reduce your taxable income while still withdrawing money tax-free in a few years is ideal. Now on the other hand, there are again contribution limits for this account. Now unlike the other accounts, you don't actually start gaining contribution room until you open up an account for yourself. Once you do that, you gain $8,000 of contribution room per year until you hit the lifetime limit of $40,000. Now if you do the math there, that means that you could contribute $8,000 a year for up to five years until you hit that limit. But there's definitely some more stuff that you need to keep in mind because there's rules around how that works. You can't just catch up on the money over years and years. So if you wanna hear more about that, make sure you check out this video linked so that you can hear more. The other important thing to know with this account is that you can only have an FHSA open for a maximum of 15 years. Now, when it comes to buying a house, you'll likely, and again, keyword being likely, actually buy that house within 15 years of starting to save up for it. But if you feel strongly that your timeline will be longer than that, then you might wanna wait to open up the FHSA until you're within that 15 year range. Now here are the pros of using an FHSA to invest that you can buy a house. The first is that you can reduce your taxable income while still saving up to buy a house. You can also withdraw your money tax-free. There's also no obligations to recontribute any money to the account, so once you use it, that's it. And then the last one is that you also, if you don't end up using the money to buy a house within 15 years, you don't lose that money. You can just transfer it instead into an RRSP or an RRIF. Now moving on to the cons. Again, your money isn't guaranteed like it is if you were to be using a savings account similar to the other investment accounts. There is also a limit on how much money you can contribute. However, if your money does grow beyond how much you've put in and contributed, 
created, you can take out all the money you put in along with the money that grew on top of it. So there's not technically a limit to how much you can take out, just how much you can put in. Also, like I just mentioned, if you don't end up using this money to buy a house within that 15 year window, you can transfer it to an RRSP or an RRIF. However, if you don't have the room in those accounts, then you might have to withdraw it as taxable income. We also wanna quickly mention that you could use a combination of potentially all of these different accounts to save up to buy a house. So one example of that is you could max out your FHSA with $40,000. You could also max out the amount that you can have in your RRSP's first time home buyer plan with $60,000 and then use both of those different accounts. So that gives you $100,000 plus. So that's still an option too. Now, something that's really important for you to know is if and how your money is protected while you're saving up to buy a house. We're really excited to be working with CDIC or the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation on this video. If you haven't heard of them, CDIC is a federal crown corporation that was created by parliament in 1967 to ensure eligible bank deposits up to $100,000 per category that are held at one of their member Canadian banks or federally regulated credit unions. Their coverage is free and automatic. You don't have to sign up to be protected. So basically if your bank or federally regulated credit union fails, you don't have to do anything in order to have their protection. CDIC covers nine different categories, including eligible deposits it's held in a savings account, TFSA, RSP, and FHSA. Now, to be clear, they cover Canadian or foreign currency, GICs, and other term deposits. They don't cover mutual funds, stocks and bonds, ETFs, or crypto, as those products aren't guaranteed. Thank you to CDIC for working with us on this video, and if you have any questions about CDIC, ask away in the comments below, and make sure you check out their website for more. Now we're personally and currently using a combination of an FHSA and a high interest savings account to save up for our first home purchase. And we wanna hear how you're saving up to buy a house. So let us know down in the comment box below and yeah, we'll see you next week with another video.